Hey everybody, welcome back to War Buddies. Welcome back to Fallout Wasteland Warfare. The Welcome to Daylight narrative campaign, community involvement, choose your own, whatever it is. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much for your patience for our absence last week. This project does get kind of exhausting and it is a one-man show, so thank you guys very much for being understanding. I needed a break. But we're back now. We're back. I believe this is episode six, so we've now passed the duration of the first season. Hurrah. So just to refresh everyone on where we left off, Nora and Dogmeat had got, kind of gone off on their own little adventures, and they met up with the Remnant of the Red Hand, had kind of an interesting situation with them. They didn't quite backstab them, but they let them know that daylight was going to be serious, and they're looking forward to the Red Hand reaching out in hopefully a more of a parlay type sort of thing. They also ran into the Brotherhood on the way back, and the Brotherhood kind of let slip that there's a major Brotherhood force moving in, and we'll kind of see how that goes. But now Nora and Dogmeat are back at daylight, and based off the, po the results from the last poll, we're going to continue to investigate the vault that the massive light tower is jacked into. As a reminder, you guys can vote for your MVP, who you thought the model was that performed best. You can vote in the comments below, and whoever wins that next episode will get a free boost card. You can also go to the link in the description below. That will take you to a poll where you can vote on what the characters are going to do next. And I'll talk more about that at the end of the episode. For now, welcome back to Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Welcome to Daylight. Oh, welcome home, Mum. Cotsworth, what did you do? There's Mirelurks everywhere. Oh, the free-range Mirelurk is the happiest Mirelurk. Yeah, we'll get used to it, Nora. Just a uh, little sucker's bite, you know? Benji, I was gone for two days. How did, how did you even... Well, I got good news for you. We've been poking around that vault we found, and we think we found the door in. Figured you might want to check it out when you got back. Cotsworth, are they going to eat the ship while we're gone? Oh, heavens no, they're quite well fed. That's actually more disturbing. And welcome everyone to the vault beneath daylight. This vault does not currently have a number, so feel free to hop in the comments and let me know what you think the vault should be. Otherwise, our, hero our heroic crew is all back together. We've got Codsworth, Dogmeat, Benji, and Nora up here. Codsworth rocking his usual flamethrower and buzzsaw. Dogmeat rocking his, well, dog bite. Nora has her hunting rifle and her trusty Institute laser rifle. And because she was the MVP, she also gets uh, amplified effect. So she can reroll any blank faces on these three. So that could be a good clutch card. We'll find out. Benji back here, he's been handed the alien blaster just to make himself feel better, but he also still has his bolt action pipe rifle for longer range shots. The benefit to the alien blaster is it is a, the damage type is energy and robots typically have a little bit lower armor against energy. Speaking of robots, Team Robot is roughly 400 points. It is two battered assaultrons here and here, two protectrons here and here. An iBot, because I think they're adorable, and a Mr. Handy. That is roughly 400 points of robots. Now we are playing a version of the Robot Rampage scenario, and as we do with War Budgies, we're going to change up the rules a bit. Robot Rampage is usually more of an introductory scenario. It is from the Battle for the Iron Works package, and it's usually done where the two sides uh, compete, and there's a Protectron in the middle who can switch sides. There's a luck die you roll to see whose side they're on. In this case, I decided Protectron was boring, and we're going to go with a Sentry Bot. So at the start of each turn, we're going to roll Luck Die, and we're going to see who gets to control the Sentry Bot. For that turn, he counts as being part of their team. Otherwise, another modification, the original Robot Rampage scenario, you're competing to see who can activate the most terminals. There are three terminals. We've got one here. They're very spread out. One down there. One down there. We're going to make it so that the robots can't activate the terminals. We'll leave that to the heroes. So the hero's goal is to get in, activate at least two of the terminals. Normal scenario has a five round timer on it. I'm not sure if we'll use that. We'll stay flexible because that is a lot of ground to cover and a lot of firepower to go against. So we'll see how they do. Otherwise, we're gonna run this as a normal scenario. The big deciding factor of the carnage is going to be, of course, who gets the sentry bot at the start of each turn. But with that out of the way, let's start delving into this vault beneath daylight, see if we can find some answers.
Before we do anything, we're gonna roll for the Sentry Bot. So if the token shows up Luxide, then Nora's team will own it. And we're in good shape for turn one. So here's the start of the first turn. The Sentry Bot will realize there's intruders, go on alert, but then recognize Nora's pit boy and decide that they're supposed to be friendlies. So in order to get him out of the way, because there is a 50-50 shot, he will not be theirs come next turn. Nora's gonna command him to roll down this way. Kind of open up the center there for the Survivor's Gang. And he's going to lay into the Protectron. Using the missile launcher, because we don't like to screw around here on War Buddies. On eight, beautiful hit with an armor break. That's three physical damage against three physical armor. And he blocks it all. It ricochets off the dome, spirals into the wall, huge explosion. I'm sure that'll be an awkward conversation between these two later. Randomly selected AI folk is going to be Mr. Handy. We'll hover up to this doorway with a red move. And they'll take another one. It's kind of hard to negotiate this terrain sometimes. And he'll hover up to here. Not quite out in the open, but ready to greet the visitors. And in case anyone's wondering, that is the custom surgeon model from last season. He's the only other Mr. Handy I have. And going back to Survivor's turn, Codsworth is going to go next. He's going to hover down to this step with a red move, same as Mr. Handy. And then we'll hover down again, taking cover behind this little barricade. I assume they have a very polite exchange of words where they explain that they're about to shoot each other. Let's all try and hear we're good to go next. It will take a single move down to the end of this corridor. And then we'll step out into here as their second red move. Sort of fortifying the, center, fortifying the center position. As a reminder, they have the head laser. So after each action, if there's a non-friendly line of sight, they will charge one onto this weapon. When it hits three, they get to shoot. We're gonna add one counter onto there because Codsworth was not in view after the first move, but is definitely in view now. Back upstairs, we're gonna crank up the dog meat. He is close to Nora, so we'll get to see if he gets any vats. Dog meat vats. Dog meat gets vats. He's gonna start off using his quick action to move yellow, because dog meat is very fast. And make it onto the stairs. He'll take a red move to get down most of the stairs. Second quick action, he will take a red charge instead of his normal blue charge, launching him into the Assaultron, and his final full action will be dog bite. He's got the dog meat special with the black die for the charge, hitting on sixes. Sixes is good, armor break, extra damage, and the ball to cap would knock off a prepare action if he had him. Battered Assaultron normally has one plus one armor, so the little block one from the remaining strong armor, taking two of their eight health. The other Assaultron gets to go next. It will take a charge action, because right now the sentry is showing as a hostile. It will Assaultron swipe on fives, black die for the charge. Fives is good, bonus damage, so three physical damage. Three physical damage against three plus one armor. And blocks all of it. That puts two charges on that one's head laser, one for the charge and one for the attack. We actually should have resolved the prepare action. Come on. And we'll go ahead and do that now as he opens up with the minigun on the attacker. If you need a refresher on the minigun, this is a walked fire weapon with five shots. Each consecutive hit inflicts an armor break, which is good because it's only one damage and the Assaultron has one plus one armor. So we're gonna have to get some black die bonus damage and probably some armor break in order to start chewing through him. Since he's attacking a charger, he gets no penalty and we'll launch into him with eights. First shot. First shot's a hit. Deals no damage because it's strong armor, but the next one it has an armor break. So now we're down to zero plus one on the Assaultron. There's your bonus damage. So two damage against zero plus one armor. Drops one point. Shot number three. Shot number three is good, another point of damage. Shot number four. Shot number four hits, but doesn't do anything. And shot number five, nothing doing. Still not bad, that is two health off of the Better to Saltron's eight health. Or is gonna roll for Vats next. Nora gets one Vats. Nora's got a long way to go to get to those computer terminals, so I'm going to use, get to there. She'll come down, start coming down the steps, yellow move, 
Second yellow move. Show up behind Codsworth there. It's kind of a tough call from here because come next turn, it's going to be a 50-50 shot whether or not the sentry bot is still on her side or not. And we don't know that yet. So she's going to stay in the doorway and she will take a quick action shot into the Mr. Handy who will get cover from the barricade. Use her Institute laser rifle to go after his weaker armor. Hitting on, what are we hitting on? Seven fives with cover. Good hit, armor break. Mr. Handy only has one energy armor, so that sails right on through. Nora's gonna try to get an extra crit point out of that. And she does not. This Protectron is kind of stuck because the Sentry Bot is in the way, so he's going to open up with his Protectron hand laser into this combat. Normally hitting on three, so he's hitting on fives now going into combat. And that's a miss. And number two. Good hit. One or three will be the big guy, and anything else will be the Assaultron. It's the Assaultron. Two energy damage against two energy armor. And blocks both. Our boy Benji has no vats, so he will move down to the stairs, taking some cover behind this crate. This Protectron will lumber forward to the corner. And we'll shoot his hand laser into Nora. Slightly into long range, hitting on threes. Threes it is. Two energy damage against Nora's three plus one armor because she is a survivor. Wow, okay, one gets through. Nora comes down to stairs, gets zinged by a laser, and most importantly, loses her strong armor bonus. The iBot will be the last one to go for the turn. He's going to shoot into the combat with dog meat. He's hitting on tens, shooting into the combat. Good hit, bonus damage, so two energy damage. One or three will be dog meat. And it's the Assaultron again. Assaultron has two energy. And they take two energy. Brings that Assaultron down to half their health, four damage. I'm sure he just needs to dial it in. He's going to shoot again. Same target. Six. Okay, good hit. Again, two energy. Who's the lucky winner? <laughs> the Assaultronic. Okay, no more shooting into combat for this one. Two energy damage, two energy armor. Okay, they only take one that time. And that closes out turn one. Here's where we stand. We've got one objective back here in the sealed off hallway. Sentry bot is holding that doorway very well for the moment. No idea whose, whose side he'll be on here in a second. The team is down to the bottom of the stairs, but they are getting stonewalled a bit. We've got dog meat tangling with the Assaultron. That one's going pretty well, mostly thanks to this guy's shooting. We've got objectives again down this tunnel and at the far end of that room. They need to switch on two objectives in order to win. Let's move into turn two. Our event card is Rugged Rubble. Rugged Rubble, that's hard to say. We're gonna draw a danger card and a random model belonging to the player without the advantage marker, which will be Team Robot, will be affected. Actually, first what we need to do is figure out if the Sentry Bot is on Team Survivor or Team Robot. So here we go. On luck, it will be on Nora's side. And he's on the winning side again. Our danger card is gonna be a fire trap. Shockingly, our OSHA code vault is not stable. So there's gonna be an underground gas leak. Whoever it is is gonna have to test perception at plus two. And if they're not successful, they will be on fire. Conveniently, there are exactly six robots in play. So we're gonna use our proprietary budgie D6. And the winner is one, two, three, four. Mr. Handy is now on fire. Probably not actually. He is perception seven plus two, so perception nine. <laughs> right. Yeah, three eyes and he didn't see this coming. Oh, how John loves setting models on fire. So this is really good news for Team Nora because the Sentry Bot is on their side again and he's holding down this hallway for right now. So essentially that limits them to just these two ends over here. Of the crew, Codsworth and Nora are the best equipped to handle computers. Uh, Dogmeat obviously not very good at that. Tends to slobber on the keyboard. So if Dogmeat can hold them off, Nora and Codsworth can split up Try to get to each of the objectives. Let's see how that goes. We're gonna start with Nora, rolling for vats. One vats. Nora is gonna take a yellow move out to the center of the room, where she will then 
Use her quick action to put a shot into the iBot. Hitting on sevens. Beautiful hit, bonus crit, two more damage. All right, it's a three energy damage shot. Three energy damage against one energy armor. And he takes two. She'll then finish up with a red charge past the Mr. Handy and into the little iBot. Moving over to Team Robot, the War Buddies house rule is that we prioritize people in combat. So we'll randomize if it is this Assaultron or this Assaultron who goes next. Gonna be the one against Dog Meat coming in with an Assaultron swipe on fives. Oh, good hit, double armor break. That brings Dog Meat to zero plus one, so he will take one damage and lose his strong armor bonus. Assaultron coming in with second swipe, still hitting on fives. Miss on that one. That is two actions with enemies in line of sight, so they are now primed. And on their next turn, they can use a shoot action to fire the head laser. If you've ever played Fallout 4, you know exactly what sound effect is happening in the background. Meanwhile, Codsworth is going to have none of that, and he's going to hover around. And slash with his Mr. Handy buzzsaw. Hitting on sixes, green die for having his friend dog meat, yellow die for the buzzsaw, black die for the charge. On sixes. Beautiful hit. This five, no, four damage. Four damage is one plus one, so if we don't see a one, then the model's destroyed. We don't see a one, so that Assaultron goes down to zero health. I say reduced to zero instead of destroyed here because the Assaultron has a self-destruct rule. So when it runs out of health, we roll a blue die. If the blue die shows up a star, we don't remove it. Instead, on its next turn, we get to blow it up, which looks like that which is terrifying. So let's roll a blue die first. We're hoping to not see a star here. We do not see a star. So with dog meat holding onto one of its arms, Codsworth runs up and cuts it in half. I'm sure somebody's curious in the comment section, so just to let you know, the Assaultrons self-destruct on a star. The Protectrons self-destruct on a mushroom cloud, but they start checking at half health, so they can just randomly go. And the Sentry Bot always self-destructs. So it could get a little spicy in here. Let's find out. Our next runner up is going to be Mr. Handy, who immediately takes one damage from being on fire. Stupid gas leaks. And we're going to roll a luck die to see if it goes out. Does he feel lucky? Yes, he does. Fire goes out. Which is pretty good because I'm sure his butt is made of jet fuel. I can say that on camera, right? He unfortunately also has a flamer and a couple of juicy targets here. So he's going to center his flamer on dog meat. He does have to roll to hit first on fives with a whole mess of stuff that could happen. So on fives, no hard miss. Second shot, same target, fives. Miss again, but we got a quick action. Team Survivor's turn, Dog Meat is going to charge the Protectron. I'm trying to get out of the way of this guy, again, in case he decides to turn traitor or loyalist, however you want to look at it. Dog Meat special with a black die hitting on sixes. Oh, just barely a hit. Not bad. Two damage against four physical armor. And he blocks all of it. And Mr. Handy's going to use his reaction, since Dogmeat just ran by, to fire his flamer again, not at Dogmeat, but at this other Mr. Handy, who has clearly been corrupted by some sort of survivor virus. Getting on threes for the quick action. And still miss. I'm not convinced that flamer's loaded. A randomly selected robot is going to be the Protectron, who will lumber up here since he wasn't having much luck with his hand laser, and he will try to swipe. As an agility of one, he's mostly just here to give a green die to his buddy. So hitting on ones, but with a green die, that is not a one. Big hero Benji is going next. He will finish his trip down the stairs, thusly, and we'll shoot his, uh, we'll try out the alien blaster, shoot his little weird pew pistol into Mr. Handy. It's hitting on ones with cover, so go and place your bets in the comment section below. And it's a miss. One day we'll draw melee weapons, Benji. One day. Assaultron is gonna go next with a green die from his buddy. Let's kind of assume that everyone's a buddy in this magical twisted wasteland we've got here. Anyways, hitting on fives, bonus green die for the Protectron. Oh, barely a hit, all right. Two damage against three plus one armor. So really we need to see a four. And we don't that does fully charge the laser 
So they'll unleash the head laser as a shoot action. Head laser going off, this is hitting on sixes. With a green die for the Protectron. Potential three energy damage coming up. See how they do. Wow, beautiful hit, bonus action, bonus damage. Fantastic. All right, so it should have said hitting on fours because it is a close, it is a ranged weapon being used in close combat. But since your bot is now three plus one because of his bonus cover, and he blocks all of it again. That has got to be super intimidating right now. Speaking of which, Nora will direct him to back up a step, coming back up to this part of the doorway, just to get out of his own blast range here in a second, which will provoke free attacks from both of his com uh, combatants. Protectron still hitting on ones. Wow, he actually hit. But it only deals one damage, so strong armor stops it. Sorry, bub. Assaultron swipe. Assaultron swipe is good. Three plus one armor against two physical damage. And he blocks both. Assaultron will respond with a quick action charge because she does not want to get shot with a missile. But since Nora's the one driving, she's going to get shot with a missile anyways, just at much closer range. So missile launcher hitting on sixes now because of close range. Fine hit with a bonus damage. Does four physical damage against one plus one armor. Uh, she takes three damage. Brings her down to three health remaining. The blast is going to be three damage against the sentry bot against his three plus one armor. And he blocks it all. He will henceforth be referred to as the Ironclad. And I really hope he stays on Nora's side. Speaking of which, Protectron's going to cut loose with his hand laser in close combat. Hitting on ones. Nope. Hitting on ones. Black die dropped. Oh, there we go. It's not bad. That is a four energy damage hit. Four energy damage against Dog Meat's two energy armor. Oh, Dogmeat takes a stinging hit. Not expecting that out of a Protectron, Dogmeat suddenly down to one health. Meanwhile, the iBot's gonna shoot into Nora. Sixes for close combat. Good hit, two damage. Two damage against four energy armor. And she takes one. Second shot on sixes. And it's a miss, good thing too. So except for turn two, this hallway is still secure only because the sentry bot has decided to stay on Nora's side. The gang has sort of spread out through the main lobby, which is potentially bad news if this guy decides to be mad at them here in a second. Benji just come down the doorway, Codsworth holding in there. Dog me on his last leg, unbelievable shot from the Protectron. Nora's made a break for the back there, but she's tied up with the iBot. So let's see how we do moving into turn three. All right, turn three, here's the big question. Whose side is the sentry bot on? And it's Team Robot. Our event card for turn three is a hidden observer. Spoiler, it's you. You're watching this video. All right, so the bad news is, now that the sentry bot has switched sides, this whole corridor is suddenly a danger zone. He's also no longer blocking it because friendly models can move through other friendly models. So could be a lot of uh, hate and discontent coming down this hall, we'll find out. Regardless, Codsworth needs to get out of there. Benji, also not in a great spot. He has no idea what he's walking into. We're going to start off then with Codsworth on Team Survivor. And since Codsworth cares not for difficult terrain, being a little jet propelled buddy, I don't know what word I was thinking of, he's gonna take a move there and hop down here to the other side of this barricade, making a break for the first terminal. Projectron facing off with dog meat gets to go next, shooting and hitting on ones. Nope. And can he do it? No, he cannot. Quick action only. Nora is likewise going to break out of prison here. She'll declare a move out there. It's like so. Give the iBot a free shot at her. It's a quick action, minus two, and he's going to use his little laser of melee, so another minus two. He's hitting on fours. And he misses. And that lets Nora get, let's see, pretty close. Yeah, she's in. She will get into contact with this, but cannot activate it, obviously, on this turn. 
Back on Team Robot, Mr. Handy's going to buzz up here, and he's going to try to cut down dog meat. Hitting on fives, black die for the charge, green die for a friend, yellow die for the Mr. Handy buzzsaw. Nine, no, miss, and that's a good thing too. Benji is liking the amount of cover he's got in the doorway, so he's going to shoot with his alien blaster into this combat and hope he does not roast the pupper. Hitting on fives, shooting into combat. Good hit. But who did he hit? So we'll have one, two be Protectron, three will be dog meat, and then four will be Mr. Handy again. Just don't show me a three. We got a four, so Mr. Handy. Two energy damage against one energy armor. And he takes two. Benji likes to field this blaster, so he's gonna try it again. Same target. And he forgot to turn the safety, the alien safety off or something. The robot is honestly quite upset about this turn of events, so Sentry Buzz can turn around. Now recognizing that the person with the pit boy is not his friend, he's going to shoot his missile launcher all the way down to Nora. Hang on sixes, because she does have cover. Oh, oh boy. She has four physical damage, but she has four physical armor for that crate being in the way. Best of luck, Nora. Angie blocks it all. Speaking of people we should call Ironclad, he's then going to open up with the minigun, same target. This range, the minigun does not get a black die, so we're hitting on sixes again. First shot. Miss. Second shot. Miss. Third shot. Hits. But it's one damage against uh, armor four, so there's no way she can't block it. Next attack, we'll have one armor break for consecutive. Sixes, and it misses, oh my god. Final shot, doesn't really matter, does it? Because he can't break through armor. Unbelievable, just absolute hell storm of fire. Poor Ibot ducking out of the way. Into here, either hitting the crate, or Nora just takes it like a boss. And that is the Sentry Bot's entire arsenal. Dogmeat's gonna go next, he's feeling a little outnumbered, and he's gonna try to take down that Mr. Handy, who should only have two health left. So maybe he'll get lucky. On for the dog meat special on sixes. Oh, beautiful shot. So he gets a quick action on armor break. Well done. Damage against two armor. And he blocks it. Protectron will use his quick action to respond with his laser. And miss horribly. Going back to dog meat, taking his second shot at Mr. Handy. There's a good hit with uh, some bonuses. All right. Three damage against three armor. Oh, he takes two. Two's all he had left, so Dogme grabs his arm, does a little wag of his head, and slams him into the wall. Little Ibot's gonna turn 180, and he's gonna shoot his laser into Nora. Nora is not gonna get cover against this guy, so he's hitting on eights. Good hit. One energy damage, three energy armor. She's fine. And second shot, still hitting on eights. Oh, good shot. Two energy damage. Two energy damage against two energy armor. And she blocks both. Nora is having none of it today. The Saltron is now able to move to a friendly base, so she will move green in a charge. Up here gets Dogmeat. Who's going to use his quick action to retaliate before she can stab him? I guess it's not retaliation because she hasn't hit him yet, so it's sort of a pre-taliation. Hitting on fours for quick action. And missing. He's gonna come in with the Assaultron swipe. We've got a green die for having the friend, black die for the charge, other stuff for the swipe. Hitting on fives. Oh, it's a hit with an armor break. This might be it, folks. And sure enough, with two damage against now one armor, Dogmate needs to go hide in a corner until the violence is over. Our last Protectron buddy will lumber forward to here and then end up just in front of the sentry bot. And that wraps the turn. Crazy business going on. So the sentry bot managed to hold these guys off long enough. The gang is now dispersed. Cotsworth is almost at that terminal. Nora is at that terminal and has soaked up an amazing amount of fire considering she's still within firing range. Benji, not sure what's going on, but he likes his new gun. And even though it's looking kind of rough right now with dog meat going down, it looks like they managed to break through the center room in time. So 
We're gonna move on to the next turn. Let's see whose side the Sentry Bot is on now. All right, moment of truth time. Sentry Bot is still Team Robot. In the event card, we have drawn our consequence. So this turn, when Nora's team readies a model, they may ready an additional unused model, which is very useful because they're about to try to make a sinister double play. That double play is, of course, they're going to ready Cotsworth and Nora. And if everything goes well, they'll be able to activate both terminals and call this game right now. So we're going to go to Co we're activate Cotsworth first. He'll spend one action to move up and one action to try to break into the terminal. Shot looked kind of dumb because I hadn't removed the old tokens yet. You can ignore those. Codsworth with the win. Codsworth, Intelligence 7 for computers, needs a 7 to unlock that terminal. And he does. Terminal 1 is secure. Over to Nora, she's got only Intelligence 5 on this one, but she has two chances as long as she doesn't screw it up too bad the first time. Coming in for the win on 5. There you go. Terminal's open. And with that, no matter how angry the Sentry Bot is, they have unlocked both terminals. They now control the systems of the vault and can safely power down all these robots and start exploring their newfound basement. All right, that's good work. Everyone spread out. See if you can find some terminals or something to indicate what this place used to be. Nora, Nora. What is it, Benji? It's, it's beautiful. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. As a result of winning, Nora is going to receive 200 caps for daylight. They're currently at 75 after all the building at the beginning. So they're going to start off next episode with 275 in the bank. Furthermore, because they now have control of the vault, or at least enough of the vault to get to the power systems, they are going to do what whoever their predecessor was, and they're going to plug their systems straight into the vault. So we're going to double the capacity of all the generators that are purchased for daylight. So hopefully they won't have to swarm themselves with generators in order to keep going. And perhaps most importantly, we've finally given Benji back a suit of power armor. So we're going to randomize how that went at the start of next episode. Stay tuned. As far as next episode goes, when Nora and the gang return to the surface, they're going to find there's been a distress call from a nearby settlement. And it was kind of nonspecific. They have some options here. So go to the, the link in the description below to vote on the following options. They could, one, rush off and try to defend the settlement. Maybe make some friends, see who it is, who knows. We don't know who they're up against yet. They could wait for the fight to finish and then go investigate the remnants. That way you don't have to get into a fight with some unknown factor. You can just go and clean up afterwards. Or three, they could completely ignore it and go off on their own adventure to find guns and ammo and all things glorious in the wasteland. Who knows? You guys know because you'll be voting. So go to the link in the description. We'll run it through, say, Wednesday or Thursday of this week, and then I'll close it. Take a look and we'll prep ourselves for next episode of Welcome to Daylight. Thanks for watching.